Hi there. In this video I'll be removing and refitting the control module on a Hotpoint WMA33 washing machine. The procedure is the same as in a number of other models within this range, namely the WMM, WMT and SCR machines. The main reason for this video is to complement the configuration information on our website. On this particular range of washing machine there are a number of different control modules used and it is possible to fit a control module from one machine within a given range onto another and reconfigure it to work on that machine. But you do need to know which machines use which modules. This information and configuration data is freely available on our website at selfix-uk.co.uk. Before you attempt any repair on a domestic appliance, first remove the plug from the mains power supply. There are two caps on the front edges of the top. These cover torque screws. Remove the covers and the screws, then lift the front of the top about an inch or so and slide it backwards to free it. Pull the soap drawer out as far as it will come. Then press down on the blue centre tab and pull it all the way out. Remove the stainless steel screws from the drawer opening and you can slide the fascia panel to the right. This will unhook it from the bracket which is holding it to the cabinet. Be careful with it because of the wires that are attached to the module. Ease it forward and fold it over so you can get access to the wiring harness. At this point it would be a good idea to take a photo of the terminal blocks for when it comes to replacing them. Now remove them one by one and don't pull on the wires. Ease the terminal blocks away from the module. If you have to touch the module then do so by holding the edges. As with the terminal blocks, don't pull on the wiring alone but grip the connectors and ease the terminals apart. This way you'll have less possibility of snapping the wires or damaging the module. Make sure you remove all the edge connectors before unhooking the module. When all the terminal blocks have been removed, bend the little tabs away from the module as you ease it up. When all three have been released, the module will come free. Once again, just hold the edges of the module of the aluminium bracket in the centre to grip it by, just in case it's not the module that's at fault, because just touching the components on the board could cause them to short out. I doubt if you'll have the necessary equipment to test the module but you can give it a visual check to see if any of the copper tracks have blown. This would indicate that the module needs replacing, but be careful because in these cases it usually isn't the module that's at fault, it would be something else that caused the module to blow, such as a short somewhere or more commonly a defective motor. So just replacing the module without rectifying the cause will only blow the new module. These three clips hold the module in place, while the upper section hooks into these bits of moulding. Once again be careful how you hold the module while you fit the upper section into the fascia. Then press down on the lower part at each point by the three pillars and it will clip into place. At this point you may want to refer to your previously taken photos or diagrams as to where each edge connector fits. One module in particular changed in design after September 2000, where the edge connector, which accommodated a 10-way plug, altered to accept a 6-way and two 2-way plugs. There's more information about this on the relevant section on the website. Take your time when it comes to replacing any wiring connection or plug assembly, because there may be a few terminals they can connect onto. This is the reason for taking the photos or making the diagrams. One wrong connection could damage the board or components. You're not in a race, look carefully at what you're doing. If needs be, take a few moments and study how it all fits together before actually doing it. These modules cost a lot of money and damaging one for the sake of a few moments spent looking at it to see what goes where is daft. When you've checked that all the terminals have been fitted correctly, lift the fascia up and hook it into this bracket. Make sure the wires don't get caught as you refit it. The 
The edge of the slope dispenser fits inside the opening on the fascia, so you'll probably need to jiggle it about a bit just to get the screw holes lined up. When they are lined up, fit the screws, but don't over tighten them because you are screwing into the nylon dispenser and you could easily strip the thread. Refit the dispenser drawer and replace the top. Because we will now be going into the configuration section of this video, make sure the door is closed as well and turn the power back onto the machine. OK, you've changed the module and printed off the relevant page from the website that covers your particular model. So you should have one or two bits of paper with configuration information on, which we will now run through. As I said at the beginning of this video, this is a WMA33. Your model may be different, so go by the information printed on your bits of paper. Start with the selector at OFF. Turn the selector to K while pressing Super Rinse and Rinse Hold and continue holding the buttons for about 5 seconds. The Super Rinse, Rinse Hold and Rinse and Spin LEDs will now start flashing. Press Start for about 2 seconds and all the LEDs will go out. This confirms the module configuration program has been started. Choose your model from the list. This is a WMA33 and turn the selector to the first code letter for that model. In this case it's H, so I'll turn the selector to H. Touch the start button and the Super Rinse LED lights to accept the code. The next code letter on my list is E, so I'll turn the selector to E and touch the start button. Now the rinse hold lights up. The following code letter is F, so I'll turn the selector to F, touch the start button and both rinse hold and Super Rinse light up. The last code letter is Z e again, so I turn the selector to E and now Super Rinse flashes while Rinse Hold lights up. The final spin LED also lights, but that's irrelevant. It could be on or off at this point. Now turn the selector back to A, that's anti-clockwise, and slowly turn the dial through all the programs, pausing at each one to notice if the final spin LED is on or off. Tick the lettered boxes on your paper at each on and leave it blank if it's off. The first program is A and the light is on so tick the A box. B is also on so tick that box. C is off so leave that box empty. D is also off so leave that box as well. E is on so tick that box. F is on so tick that box. G is on, so tick that box. H is on, so tick that box as well. J is off, so leave that box empty. K is on, so tick that box. L is also on, so tick that one as well. Rinse and fast spin is on, so put a tick in that box. Rinse and slow spin is off, so leave that one empty. Fast spin is on, so tick that one. And slow spin is off. You will now have a number of ticks and blank spaces in the boxes on your configuration sheet. Match this with the chart on the website and you can tell if you've configured your control module properly for your machine. If the data does not tally with the chart, then do it again. You may have entered the wrong code letter. Turn the dial to off and the machine is once again ready for use. On behalf of Selfix UK, we'd like to thank you for watching this video and hope you found it useful. Goodbye.